darn it. <laughs> oh, okay, we started. Oh. <laughs> As usual. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And we are a knit ship. She knits and crochet. We're not going to be able to do anything right today. I see that. It's going to be that kind of thing. You day. know what? I think I like a knit ship. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're a knit ship. <laughs> And a crochet cruise. And on a crochet cruise. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. There we go. <laughs> you might be on to something here. <laughs> it might have just happened. It might have just happened. Anyway. <laughs> I just want to welcome all the new people. Hi, thanks for joining us. I can't wait to see what everybody is going to be up to. Um, I'm Lisa, like I said, and this is my sister, Chris. I knit and she crochets. Because it's easier. It's not easier. <laughs> it's kind of like a running joke when people used to come into the yarn store and say, well, which is easier, knitting and crochet. And Lisa and I would both say at the same time, crochet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's how we it's roll. really crochet. It. <laughs> it's one stick. That's part of the thing. It's one stick. Okay, crap. <laughs> you look at me. You heard that? I thought I was about to pop out. <laughs> anyway, you're not cut out for spy craft. I'm what not. No, I'm not subtle enough. <laughs> Anyway, back to the business. Okay, back to the business at hand. Anyway, thank you those who have been along for this crazy little ride we're on. And like I said, thank you for the new people to, for joining us. We have a giveaway to do today. We just use a random number generator and let it pick someone at random. So before from we, among our subscribers. Yes, from among our subscribers, not, not like everyone in the world. That would have been weird. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have broken the generator. But before I announce who all has won, I just want to show you what exactly they've gotten. What they exactly they will be receiving. So we have this handy dandy Harry Potter inspired Christmas sweater project bag with zipper. A spindle and some fiber, so you can try out spinning. This cute little hat kit with a, a panda bear pom-pom. Come on now. A big fluffy skein of Noro Curion Air. What is that made of? It's 100% wool. This soft, silky skein of Juniper Moon Farm Moonshine, which is a blend of alpaca, wool, and silk. Feels like heaven. A shawl pin. Oh. A trial size bottle of Eucalan in the grapefruit scent. I'm sorry. A sparkly, blingy row counter. Knitlet. Some knitlet. This called Murder in Merino. Yes. By Sally Goldbell. Golden Bell. And finally, there is a leather shawl cuff that also will dub double as quite the adorable bracelet so and it will all be in this fun little tote because who can't use a tote bag i collect them by the dozen so once we announce the winner please get in touch with us and let us know your details so we can send you your prize. How should they get in touch with us? Um, you can either, actually, you can email us, um, a knit sheet at gmail.com. I don't know why the same email I've had for eons. I remember for a second. Oh, yeah. So send us an email at a knit sheet at gmail.com. And our lucky winner.
is Laura Blair. So Laura Blair, please get in touch with us. You have her, what is it called? What are we on right now? YouTube, her um, YouTube name. That's what she uh, used. She's Laura Blair. Okay. So there we go, Laura Blair, let me know. Anyway, that's the giveaway. What do you got going on this week, Chris? Oh, I feel like you gotta make me go first. <laughs> huh? I feel like you gotta make me go first. Do you want me to go first instead? Yes, you can. Okay. <laughs> I'm flexible. I have my tank top. And I am most of the way done now, I think. It's, it's going to look crazy at the moment because I have the two fronts done and I just started on half of the back. But sadly, I am going to run out of yarn before this thing is complete. So I'm going to have to go and pick up one more skein. Oh, here it is. It's looking more like a shirt now. I'm going to have to pick up one more skein of this yarn. I know it doesn't look like anything at the moment. <laughs> I'm looking at it in the camera. I'm like, oh. But uh, this week, I had I had a little bit of difficulty because what happened was, you know those stitches you're supposed to drop all the way down? Well, there's a particular stitch you have to drop, and it's going to meet up with a yarn over you made in the beginning. Well, one of my drop stitches missed the yarn over, like completely missed. So I had dropped it all the way to the bottom of the top. Let me see if I can show this. Ah, right, there we go. So what I had to do was take a crochet hook and just knit that right back up <laughs> all the way to the top of the shoulder from the hem of the thing. But you know what? Why is this done with a crochet hook and not a knitting needle? Because it's easier. You know what? <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> I see what you did right there. I was just curious. Because when the, there's no way to tension. When you're moving the yarn around with, an, with knitting needles, you're using tension to move that yarn where you want it to go. And because you're not attached to the ball, you're not, there's no way to put tension on that yarn. The easiest way to actually pick up a, a drop stitch, no matter how far down it's falling, is to use a, a crochet hook. That's the easiest way I found. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so I I knit it right back up to the top, and then I dropped it again. I dropped another stitch. That stitch didn't work out either. So I went back to the first stitch, which looked better, and I'm just gonna have to do some magic on the bottom. To make it look like it's going to be. Which stitch are you supposed to draw? Don't know at this point. Oh. Um. Yep, yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I had some, I had a little bit of drama. But I have this much yarn left. But you can't tell, like, you can't, you find that yarn over and then. Yeah, I tried that too. And what I did was the, the first time through, I got my trusty crochet cotton and I ran a line. Crochet cotton. Yes. We don't mind helping out. I know you don't. You know what? <laughs> Crocheters are good people. <laughs> okay. Generous souls. And I ran a line up what I thought was the correct stitch. And then I let that stitch down. That stitch didn't meet up with the with the um yarn over either. So I made a mistake somewhere. But you know what? It's all going to work out. It's, it's fine. But <clears throat> what I do want to suggest to everybody is get yourself some of this stuff. Um, do I still have the label? Is that just the Annie's? Yeah, I think it's just Annie's crochet cotton. I keep a ball of this in white, another one in black, and one in red. So when I need to run a lifeline or store some stitches temporarily. I can always use a color that stands out against my yarn, no matter what color it happens to be. And 
when I do use a bit of it and I might need to use it again, when I pull it out, I just butterfly it and save it. And I can often use it, you know, several times through unless, you know, I have to cut it. But I find this was, this is kind of some of the best stuff for running flies through knitting because it doesn't stick to anything. Mm -hmm. And I can just pull it right back out when it's time for it to go. So tip of the day, get yourself some, some anti crochet cotton or anybody's crochet cotton, really. A couple of colors that'll stand out from your work. Anyway, that's the story of what's going on with my top. <clears throat> so much pressure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's looking all expected. Um, I finished my dress, my silk dress. I have a few ends to weave in, but I finished my dress. <laughs> I'll probably leave in the ends right before I wear it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or in the car. <laughs> I can't do that with the dress. With the shirt, I had another shirt underneath, and I was able to. I had a sweater that I finished in the car after we got to our destination. Anyway, <laughs> I, <laughs> I finished my dress. Mm -hmm. So here it is. And I have a picture of me in the dress. Shall I put that up now, or you want to yeah, show the yeah, dress? Show, show the picture. The picture is easier. Yeah. That's cute. I like it. And I don't know if y'all can see how well my necklace with the three different medals really goes with that dress. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so excited. I am so excited because I, did, I didn't plan that at all. It was funny because I didn't see these colors as metallics until I wore the mm -hmm. necklace. But we're getting a blinky thing happening. Yeah, yeah. I think our internet might be flashing in and out. Oh, boy. Yeah. Technical difficulties. But show the other picture. Show the other okay. picture. But I realize that it does look like the colors of like, you know, if you look at coins from everywhere, mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of these notes in the dress. Oh, absolutely. So she has a name now. Uh oh. What is her name? She's the hard currency dress. Oh la la, I like it. I'm playing words because it's actual coin, so it's the hard currency. I like that. But yeah, so that, that's how she got her name now. Because I really didn't see it until the dress was done. But I'm I'm really happy with how it came out. And Super then so cool. the back has like a deep V that goes just to above the bra strap, so I can wear like a normal bra with mm -hmm. it, but you can see the difference between the back and the front, how much lower the back is. Yeah. Um, and I have a couple of little side splits. And then, remember I told you all, I made the front a little too narrow because I accidentally used my bust measurement instead of my hip measurement. I was just on autopilot and plugged in the wrong number. So I ended up making the back of the dress just a little bit wider. And I didn't need to do the, um, the tuxedo stripe I was thinking about to give it some stretch along the sides. Mm -hmm. But once I had that idea in my head, <laughs> I was kind of fixated on it. So I ended up doing just, so this doesn't add any width to the dress, but I did just a visible seam. So usually I do my seams on the inside and I do um, slip stitch. But this time I did, it's actually a row of single crochet and then the second row is slip stitch. To just finish that off and it looks almost like if you do if you okay oh is is that gonna be in the video that little I blackout i don't know i think so we'll see <laughs> <laughs> maybe i have to do some editing on this one and edit yeah it out. we're having some internet issues today okay um it looks like if you do a surgery scene mm -hmm. and so it gives like a t-shirt kind of like an inside out look yeah and you know, with this this rustic yarn and the muted colors, I felt like that inside out thing kind of just went right along with it. And it also just brought some of this off white that's at the top all the way down the dress. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy with how it came out. And let me tell you, the yarn, it's, it's a raw silk. It doesn't have that slippery feel that you're used to from silk. And I liked it anyway. And I still thought it felt like very, very nice. Um, but when I steamed it, magic happens. Yep. And the dress, it feels wonderful. It just like floats over me when I put it on. And I mean, I steamed it like maybe like three, four minutes. It, it didn't, didn't take very long. 
because my my bottom edges were curling and I really just wanted to steam those out so that they'd actually be pointy. <laughs> but I gave the whole dress a quick steam and what it does to this yarn. I'm still mad this yarn is discontinued because, oh my gosh, once you steam it, it's it's yarny perfection. Whoa. I love it. It's Ella Ray Rustic Silk. Mm -hmm. It's fingering weight, 100% silk. And my mom is actually using some right now to make a tank top. And once she steams that bad boy, oh my gosh. It's going to be gorgeous. <laughs> because she's doing something that's like an open lacy pattern. And yeah. it's going to be really nice. But I finished my dress and I'm very, very happy with it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm glad I went back to it because I had actually set it aside mm -hmm. and I worked on some other things. I made the sunset. I made the, the wool walk tee, which I'm wearing, and yeah. the bag. And and I finally went back to the dress. And I'm so glad that I finished it. It was so worth it. And it I looks love great. It. it looks absolutely love fabulous. It. Oh, but speaking of mom's tea that she's making uh let me share something with you <laughs> um the pattern while it is you know it's producing the the top here's something you might want to do um this particular pattern was written in such a way that it keeps referring you back to other sections of the pattern so like repeat these rows repeat those rows yeah so it was like it was you really know the name. um you know what let me look I might have to tell you about this top, but well, it doesn't matter th this particular top what it is, but because of how the pattern was written, and mom is working from a printed version of the pattern, and I think the designer meant for you to work from a digital, a digital version. version. It's prints on the front and back. You're going back and back and referring back, and then let's say it says, okay, in this section, let's say row thirty to forty, repeat rows you know, 10 to 20. But within that, it will say, okay, repeat rows seven and eight instead of rows. So it was like nuts. I had a skirt pattern like that and I never finished that skirt. <laughs> because it was like, depending on what size you were making, mm -hmm. you were repeating, like there, were, there was a row A and a row B. And depending on which size you were making, you would repeat a three times, you do A three times and then B once, or it could be A twice, then B, then A again, or it could be one A and two Bs. And yeah, oh, it was I remember cr that skirt. crazy. And it's a really cute skirt and I do want to make it at some point, but I got so frustrated with that bad boy. I was like, we going to part ways amicably. <laughs> well, well, I just going to keep up with it. Maybe you can do what I did for mom. So what I did with mom's pattern was she was having... A lot of drama. She had ripped it out. I mean, and mom is no joke, okay? She will take a, a, a you, piece of work to the ground. Lisa, you, you practically have to beat her up to get her to rip something out. And me and mom will just like to yank, the ground. yank that bad boy. This top was completely. Oh, yeah. It was something else. And then got completely ripped out and remade. No joke. But what I did was I went through the pattern and I put it on a spreadsheet. So I just numbered the rows and where it said, okay, from you crochet from row one to row 45 or whatever it was. And then when we hit the first repeat, I still had my numbers going consecutively down the side. And I put the repeat in there. So repeat rows four and five. I just put it in at 46 and 47 because that's how the pattern would word it. Rows 46 and 47, repeat rows four and five. And I just put those there. And I just did that all the way through the pattern. Just copy and paste it onto that spreadsheet so that it's just now, it's just one straight line. Mom is having such a much better time doing that. And maybe that's something you, if you really want to go back, because I remember that skirt, the one, the diagonal mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. That was a cute skirt. It was. Maybe you can do the same thing. Just deconstruct the, the pattern and put it, put it in order. <laughs> So you don't have to keep going back. We might do that, or we might just move fudge on. it. We might just move on. I have a schematic. I might just try to make something that shape, but not following those instructions because, yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, it gets a little tricky. 
and I, I didn't make a spreadsheet. <laughs> that was perhaps my mistake. <laughs> well, I only thought of it because that's what I ended up doing with the Stephen West pattern mm -hmm. that day because it was another one of those patterns where I was going back to this row and going and doing this 18 times. And yeah. I was never going to be able to give up with that. <laughs> I mean, never. <laughs> so I put it, I put the rows out on a spreadsheet so that I could know. I think I had to repeat 30 rows 27 times or something crazy like that. I would know exactly what repeat I was in and what row I was in. I don't in. know how you design something like that because if I had trouble keeping up with it when I'm reading it, writing it has got to be pretty special. I don't think I'm ever going to design something quite that complicated. Maybe. Never say that. I, look, okay. I don't like to speak in absolutes just because yeah. the universe likes to show you who's boss. Yeah, sure do. So, I, I am unlikely to do so, but one never knows. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe if you do, you'll do it on a spreadsheet. So yeah, I would have to. It would be followable because uh, that, that pattern was tough. When I first looked at it, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> but I will look up the name of the pattern for the crochet. It's really a cute top. It's crochet short rows, so it's just mm -hmm. got some interesting twists and turns to it. Very nice. So, you got anything else you want to talk about, or shall I go? Uh, well, you do, you okay. So, um, I told you guys I wound my yarn last week, right? For my my second uh, um, tank outline. top, my, my, yeah, for my second outline tank. <sighs> I resisted. All week swatching this thing. I know that you can wind, but no swatching. <laughs> I wish you could reach through and feel what this feels like. It feels absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to swatch this this week. I'm going to get. Well, since you're I'm, waiting for your skin to come. You yeah, can, I'm going to have to get. Little. Yeah, I'm going to swatch and have a swatch ready to go on this bad boy. Because I'm in love. Look at that shine. That, that shine is coming from the yarn. That is not a trick of the camera. And combining the cotton with the tinsel, mm -hmm. it made a, a new fabric, a new fiber that I'm just loving. Because the cotton feels softer and the tinsel doesn't feel as slippery. Because the tinsel is slippery. Mm -hmm. So it's the best of all possible worlds. I have no idea what I'm doing with my tinsel yet. Matter of fact, I knew I wasn't going to have enough of the cotton. So I ordered two more skeins of it. They should be here tomorrow. So I will be winding again. But this set of winding will not be as arduous as the first set. Because uh, <laughs> I already have the skein. I have it out of the skein already in a ball. Mm -hmm. Also, with this type of fiber, these plant fibers, you want some sort of core in your cake. Now, this is the cake that my winder makes. I just, rather than let the hole close up, I slipped that toilet paper roll in there, you know, before the hole closed. And this should keep everything in shape. Yeah, my silk collapsed, just. Yeah. I saved you some toilet paper rolls. If you want. <laughs> she was just handing them out, like, look, y'all might need these. Y'all might need these. Like, okay, sweetie. Because, you know what? I just spent a couple of hours the other day untangling yarn, so I'm still sort of like phobic about it. So I'm <laughs> doing everything I can for, to keep my yarn from tangling up on me. But this is uh, Cabot Trail from Trailhead Yarns plus Universal Cotton DK Supreme. Cotton Supreme DK. Love it. Okay, that's me. So, I'm talking about this handkerchief dress for a minute, right? Some things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, last week I showed y'all the crochet thread that I was thinking about making the dress out of. And mm. I told you I was stuck on the construction. And I decided to, because I told you I, I try to avoid shaping. So, I decided to just go with making some big old rectangles and letting them hang down. And that's how I'm going to make mine dress except she's not a dress anymore now she's just gonna be a top because i want to make smaller rectangles <laughs> okay, and reasonable. i actually changed my yarn because i saw a dress I, i've been doing like a mini closet purge in fact i didn't have that much to get rid of just because i, I do this regularly um i have a fairly stable wardrobe right now but 
I was getting rid of a few things that just don't fit anymore. Um, and I saw this dress that I had and I was like, oh, I hope this didn't get too small. I tried it on, it still fits, very cute dress. And I was like, you know what? I would love to crochet a version of this dress. So the crochet thread has now been switched to that dress that I will be making at some point in the future. Um, mm -hmm. And I've chosen a different yarn for my handkerchief, what is now a handkerchief top instead of a dress. And it's this yarn that I have had sitting around for a while. So here it is just like all up. This is Ito Gima and 8.5. I don't know what the 8.5 stands for, but they have two different yarns that they call Gima. And so one is just Gima and the other one is 8.5. So it's a 100% cotton, but it is a very unusual cotton. I have never worked with a cotton like this. Um, it is one of those yarns with like multiple strands, like four. It's basically, it's like they took four pieces of thread yeah. <laughs> and put them together. So it's still a lace weight, um, but it feels almost like linen, kind of. Um, it has that kind of crispness that linen has to it. But if you told me there was paper in this yarn, I'd have believed you. Um, it just has that kind of texture and feel to it, but I love it. It's it's a very unusual cotton, but I think it's going to make for a very pretty top. So I, and I had to start it over and all kinds of, the other night I had like this weird episode where I just couldn't count. No. And this one row was always wrong. And I did that row like maybe five or six times. Oh, wow. And it was really late and I was more tired each time I did the row. So the smart thing to do would have been to put it aside and do it the next day. But I got to that place where it's like, I'm not going to sleep until this row has the right number of stitches. It's bad when we get there. But now the row has the right number of stitches. So this was a whole skein. This is 300 and some odd yards. Oh, no, it's nice. 231 yards. Um, so this is the beginning of my top. Ooh, look at that. Oh, and I did like a ripply idea. stitch. And... <clears throat> I really like how it's coming out, but swatching with this yarn was incredibly interesting. It don't do, so this is actually going to be half of the top and I'm working from the bottom up and this, so I'm doing rows of double crochet. So my ripple is happening all in the double crochet rows. I'm doing the increases and decreases just on those double crochet rows. And then I'm doing a row of single crochet in between, right? Mm -hmm. And the single crochet rows, I'm just working even. So when I was swatching this yarn, this is becoming a mess. I'll get you but, the toilet paper roll. <laughs> so this is the same thing without the ripples. It is just alternating rows of single and double. And you see how there's just a lot more space happening between those stitches. Yeah. Now there is a use for this. I could do something that is basically meant to be almost like a fishnet. If it was something that I really wanted to have a lot of holes in it, um, I would just work even in almost any stitch would do, I think. It's upside down. Okay. Right. And this is working at 2.25 millimeters. But it's very, very open. So this is something that will give you an easy mesh without doing a mesh stitch. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want it to have, you know, this many openings in it. Yeah. And I don't know what it is about just doing that little ripple that tightened it up just a little bit. But I like this better. And so it was weird to me how using the same exact, exact stitches in the same arrangement gave me two different fabrics just by, you know, working those increases and decreases across the, you know, every other row. But I finally got a fabric that I was very happy with, but it's still like, look how light this is. It's yeah. just going to give me a lot of movement. So when, you know, it's hanging down and giving me that drape, it's going to be lovely. I think um, I'm going to end. Have steam that swatch yet? I haven't. This, I Give it a steam and see what it's like. This is not the swatch. This is the beginning of the top. Yeah, and yeah. I don't want to steam it before I finish it because I want it to, um, I don't want to work with part of it steamed and behaving one way yeah. and then the rest of it not. Got it. So I until I finish a whole panel, I won't be steaming it. I can steam this. This is just a swatch. Yeah. But um, it's probably going to be three colors. So I think it's going to be 
thought I had to put another orange in here. But it's probably going to be these three colors together. Oh, that looks nice. Oh, 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 oh. And that is only because I want to, if I make it in three different colors, I will use a small enough amount of each color that I'll have enough left to probably make a second thing. Oh. Because if I did it, I was thinking about doing it in just the dark green and the white because I have this yarn in four colors. Um, if I do it in just the dark green and the white, I'll probably use up almost all of the white and about half of my dark green. Mm -hmm. And I won't have them available for other projects. So just to preserve enough to do a second thing, um, I'm Where going to- Where did you get that? I think I ordered this directly from the company, from Ito. Okay. It's a, a Japanese brand. Um, they have free patterns on their website if you want to check them out. And they have a lot of really interesting yarns. Like for me personally, yarn store shopping opened my eyes about just the number of fibers that are available out there. There's just so many interesting things that are being done with, with yarn and different kinds of fibers that are being combined. So I'm always looking for things outside of wool and even like Within wool, I want to try different kinds of wool. Like I have a skein of BFL, but you know, I'm going to try Cordell. I want to try all the different types of wool to see, you know, even within wool, which ones I like and which mm -hmm. ones, you know, what the different kinds of wool do. So I consider myself a bit of a yarn explorer. Um, and Edo has a lot of really interesting choices. They even do have a paper yarn. I don't know if I'm down with paper yarn. I don't know how you take care of those. And I'm like, what do you do if you get caught in the rain and your paper yarn? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't think it'll melt. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, the paper yarn, most people say, don't wash this. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, am I going to walk home? It's going to be like wearing paper mache. <laughs> it's going to be a little spongy. So, um, but I do, I'll probably get around to trying a paper yarn eventually, but maybe I'll make like a bag and not a shirt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, Edo is a very interesting brand, and I think they're definitely worth a look if you're looking for something that's not just Merino. Not going to pay you Merino. What, I was like Merino. A, what was the prices like? Child, I bought these like three years ago. <laughs> well, we'll see. Check out the Edo website. Child, because I am, I, you know, bought some yarn recently. And this year, you know, I bought some yarn on my birthday, and then I had a small universal yarn. At, Universal Yarn Hall. I bought like three yarns. Um, but prior to that, I hadn't bought yarn in a minute. I'd been like really, really good. And I hadn't been buying any yarn. I've been working from stash mostly and I have quite a deep stash. Mm -hmm. So don't ask me prices on the old stuff. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> because this yarn has been sitting around for a while and I actually had it in my room. In kind of like a little basket and i was looking at it every day like you and me have a date with destiny and i couldn't figure out what i wanted to do with it and sometimes you know you just have to wait for the right idea to come along yeah so i don't mind keeping yarns around that i'm not using immediately because i know once i turn my attention to them something's going to come to me and i'm going to figure out what i want to do with it but i love that ripple stitch that looks great so I'm very, very excited about how my top is going. Originally, I made it the wrong size. So I had to, I ripped it out. A lot of my stories are like, I ripped the whole thing out. And then I ripped it out. But and started again, just made the pieces longer. But I think it's going to make for a very cute top that I can't wait to wear. It's going to be so light and comfortable. I can't even believe it. I'm excited. So... I don't know if you guys have heard, but in case you haven't, I'm going to let you know. We are hosting our very first make-along as YouTubers. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> we call it the first fall make-along. And basically the idea is I got inspired by the Summer Yarn and YouTube Pop. And it was fabulous to have a new summer garment ready to wear on the first day of summer, which was warm for summer that day. <laughs> <laughs> it was warm for much of that day um, And I was like Wouldn't it be great to have something ready to go On the first day of fall So that's the idea Let's make transitional garments To get us over the hump From summer to fall Wherever you happen to be Whatever your summer to fall transition is For us It's going to be 
hot, rainy, cold. It's going to be summer, and then we're going to have like a week and a half of fall, and yes. then it's going to be winter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But for that week and a half, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna be rocking our fall fall garment. Yeah, so it should be something that's layerable, something that can breathe, something that you can, you know, you can wear depending on whether or not it's hot or cold. What are the dates? The dates are we're gonna start on August first. With we're gonna swatch the week before that though, so I'll put out that date too. So you can actually start knitting or crocheting August first because your swatch is already gonna be done. And we're going to finish on the very first day of fall, which is September 21st. So imagine that, having a new fall outfit or a new fall garment to wear on the first day of fall. Do you know what you're making? I, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> she said so dramatic. Yes, yes I, do. I do. And I even know what I'm going to make it out of. <laughs> I am going to make my top out of this. This is Juniper Moon Farm Cumulus. It is one of my favorite cottons. Mine too, it's actually. one of my favorite cottons, although Morocco Modern Decay is coming up behind it. I was like, ooh, because that was cotton and modal. Nice. Was it nice? It's nice. Mm. But this is a chainette, and I don't know why, but I'm a sucker for chainette yarns. If you are a soft yarn person, I know as soon as I felt this, Crystal would like it because it is so soft. So soft. And the other thing about it is that it's lofty. Mm -hmm. And the fabric you right. make from it has bounce. And, you know, with inelastic fibers, that's really hard. I'm not sure what the chain that structure is doing to create that. But for me, this is a perfect kind of yarn for a garment that's going to have, I'm going to wear when it's warm and when it's cool because it's warm enough that. If it's not absolutely freezing, I will be comfortable. And it's light enough that if it's warm, I will still be comfortable. What is the name of the community? It's called Nymphala, and it's from the um, the Nora magazine. That Nora magazine has been good to you. It really has. <laughs> it really has been. It really, really has been. So I've already chosen my yarn. So I have some winding to do this week so I can have my skeins all wound up. But tell me what you like to do. When I am working, when I'm getting a project ready, one of the things I like to do is wind all the skeins because sometimes in the heat of the moment, I don't want to stop to wind a skein and I get really like, <laughs> if I have to, because you know, there's no more yarn around. So I like to wind all the yarn ahead of time so that I could just reach into the bag or wherever I have it and just grab the next game. So what do you guys do? Do you wind one at a time or do you wind it all? I always start with two because you were from a pattern so you have an idea how many skeins you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I should, and I'm probably going to try at some point in the future to figure out how many skeins of yarn I will need for a particular project. But I don't know when I start. So I'll wind two and then go from there. Cool. But, and it's going to be this beautiful soft gray that's going to go with everything I own. <laughs> it's just, and the color is actually called Greyhound. It's color number 13 in Cumulus. And Cumulus comes in, uh, they call it dappled. dappled. It's sort of like a soft stripe, and it comes in solids. And we have some on our website if you want to check it. What else you got, Chris? Well, I just, I, you know, I figured out what my first fall thing is going to be. Oh, my gosh. What's yeah. going to be? So I'm kind of, I'm keeping in mind that some of the things that I've made previously didn't necessarily choose the right yarns for them. So some of my earliest garments will need a little reworking in, um, you know, different yarns. Okay. So... I was actually, you know, where we were at PF Chang's and I saw a woman <laughs> in a cocoon shrug, but it was a long one that came down past her knees. And I was like, oh my God, I never thought to make a cocoon shrug that long, but that looks so good. So I decided to make one. Oh, wow. I made it out of 
a craft store cotton cone. Oh. Yeah. Like you can actually calculate a drag coefficient for me when I'm wearing it. It's so heavy. Oh my gosh. Um, so that will be my next target for a, a remake because I can't wear that thing. <laughs> I wore it once and I swear my arms got tired oh, because, no. you know, with a cocoon shrug, what happens is you get that fabric draping from the arm. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't know what I was thinking, but I do know what I was saying. I was thinking that cone was cheap and I had a coupon, right? <laughs> that was not the thing to do. I could use that for like a bag or something, but it yeah. was not for a garment that was... Not only a garment, but one that was meant to drape the fabric. Yeah. So this is actually the shrug that I made. This is on the cover and you see it's like super long. Um, I really just took the dimensions from this. I tried to do the stitch pattern in the book, but it was textured and I was using a variegated yarn. So it looked terrible. So yeah. there's the picture. So you can see there's just a slight texture there. Um, so I ended up having to choose a different stitch pattern. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's real heavy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the best up part though. Where you go ahead and make something and it wasn't right. You did do all that effort. So you'll wear it that one time and then you'll never wear it again. I love that thing. I do, yeah. but it don't let me back. Yeah, it's just and I I'm like, heaven forbid I should be out in the rain in that and it gets because like, we have like these sudden downpours and it'll rain for 15 minutes, but it'll be like the great flood type rain. Yeah, but just for 15 minutes. And so if you're outside for any period of time, you'll get soaked in very short order. Heaven forbid that all those yards of cotton. <laughs> got wet while I was wearing them. I wouldn't be no. able to move. <laughs> It'd be like being stuck in like the La Brea tar pit or something. I just someone would have to come and get me. Um, so I will be remaking that. I have um this yarn that I got from Premier. I was very surprised to find a 100 percent merino on Premier Yarns. Um, but it's a very nice worsted weight, lofty kind of uh merino. And I think, you know, I haven't worked in worse weight yarn in a very long time. So I'm a little excited because yeah. I feel like it's going to be a look at this fit. Yes. Um, but I think, you know, the difference with the different types of merino is the micron count. So I'm sure this one has a slightly higher micron count, but it's still quite soft and comfortable to wear because it's still merino. Uh -huh. um, so I think it's called chow merino or something like that. And that's what I will be making my my oversized cocoon strike out of and when I wear it I'll be able to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have things like that. So that yeah. that's the next thing on my remake list. I have a small confession to make. Oh no. You know what? Um I might end up ripping out my um my blue outline tank. The whole thing? I might. Why? I think it's going to be too... I'm going to try it on again, but I think it's going to be too big. The um, When you drop the stitches, it mm -hmm. expands. Um, and I dropped stitches all around the body and expanded it all looks around. Bigger. It looks it's It's huge. Okay. It's just like, that wasn't my play last time. So I I'm going to go down yet another size, I think. And I might... I might but you it. still have your swatch? Mm-hmm. Why don't, instead of like using the number of stitches she says, just decide how wide you need it based on the swatch and make I did, that number of stitches. But I did not realize dropping the stitches was going to expand it. And I was reading up about drop stitches because I noticed, I was like, why is it going to look so much bigger? <laughs> and the yarn, the stitch, anyway, the yarn gives you three times the stitch. So it's like I added three stitches, stitches everywhere eight you times drop. all the way around the body. Oh, well, damn. I thought when you just held it, I, I was like, just yeah, looking at it. I was like, I'm going to have to rip this out. This thing has, has grown. But it's because of the drop stitches. And because I didn't drop stitches in my swatch, I didn't see that effect. Oh. Yep. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. So that whole string you have going across is from one. Yes, drop. that's from one drop stitch. And it's just like my book said, by the way, it was the Vogue knitting book, by the way. <laughs> I'll put the actual title down in the in the description. But it's a really nice reference book. And I was going through it the other day because I was looking up drop stitches. But there were no notes in the pattern that told you that? No. And do you know if when the pattern gives you like the final bust measurement, was that with the drop stitches or before the drop stitches? I don't know. But mm. it, the drop stitches made mine way. You saw how it looked yeah. just now. I was like, why is this thing so huge? Uh, I might end up ripping that out because I don't like how big it is. Yeah, because she never rips out. Unless, what is my rule? It affects the function of the garment. And it's going to affect the function. It's going to be everywhere. <laughs> because I noticed the effect first on the straps, and that's where everybody noticed it. Mm -hmm. Because it makes the straps longer. Wow. Yeah, so I might I might rip that out completely. Aww. Yeah. I hate when, like, you learn a thing as you're making something. Yeah. <laughs> and now that thing you learn means okay. you have to I, remake it. I had planned to make it twice, so I might just rip that one out and start this one. Yeah. And then come back to it. Because I really, I love the fabric. It mm -hmm. And that yarn but, is nice. The girl, girl, it's, it's been a pleasure to work in. But looking at it, I was like, why is this thing I so I thought huge? it looked big, but I, you know, I hadn't seen it in it's a like, while, and I couldn't think, I, because I didn't know what she just said about drop stitches. I couldn't think of any reason why it would seem bigger than the last time mm -hmm. I saw it. But last time I saw it, she hadn't dropped the stitches yet. It's like I added 18 stitches all the way around because it, yeah. it's three times the amount of, of yarn. So it, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you do the whole body work before you drop any stitches. Right. You and knit it all the way up to the, to the, um, Ucha. okay. Yeah. So I might end up making, I made the size. But you know what? The original is in fingering weight, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so hers just didn't expand as much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so you're getting this effect magnified yes, because I you're am. using DK. Yes, I oh, am. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. The more you know. Yep. You need to write a blog post about that. I am. I That's have a blog post actually plan. really interesting. Okay. But when I looked at it, I was like, this, 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 this doesn't look right. Because how many stitches are you getting per inch? Do you remember? Off the top of my head, no, but I probably have my notes. <laughs> sketches are so cute. <laughs> I don't know why you think my sketches are so funny. They're cute. You see, very organized. She got a bullet journal, she got an index. <laughs> You know what? I'm not, content. I wish I were organized. Oh, let me see. So I was getting. Oh, here three and a half stitches. Yeah, three and a half stitches. Yeah, so you were adding almost an inch. Yeah, almost an inch every time I dropped a stitch. Wow. Yep. And if you were and getting something like eight or ten stitches per inch, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Oh, that who knew that yeah changing the yarn would have that effect yeah so it just made it way too big so i had already come down to the 1x size mm -hmm. so i might go down to the medium so that once i drop those stitches yeah because you're still going to get so many inches out of yeah that. that is fascinating yeah i feel like i just learned something <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and that's the other thing. If you're making a swatch and you measure it, you know, you wash it, you block it, you measure it, write down what your gauge was at the time because moments like this is when you and need to sure know. And make sure you write what happened on the page. So if you go back to that and like, oh, let yeah. me make another outline tee. This is my journal page for the outline tee. Oh, snap. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was like just sitting here sitting thinking, why it looks this, bigger. Why does this thing look so big? Okay. Yeah. Because I had tried it on and it was fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. I thought dropping stitches like that was purely decorative. Who knew? Because each stitch, it it's takes triple in size yes. basically when you drop it. When you drop it. Because I don't know that we have an analog to the drop stitch in crochet. I, I don't know because. 
crochet is a closed stitch art. Because what we yeah. usually do, like if we wanted like a, that ladder effect, we would chain. Right. But then we know exactly how many stitches mm -hmm. are in our chain. So it's a little different. But what I'm going to do, too, is when I swatch this, I'm going to drop a switch in, stitch in the swatch. Swatch, yeah. So I can see exactly Measure what it it's going to do. And had I realized what the effect of the drop stitch would be, I would have done it that way in yeah. the original swatch. That's wild. So I may not even need any more yarn. Yeah, I was just thinking. <laughs> but I made it to this. Knitting is wild, yo. <laughs> 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 so it is wild. Now you guys know me. I am anti ripping out unless <laughs> the function is going to be affected, or I really like the the pattern and I'm not getting the pattern right, so I will rip that out. So I think I'm going to end up ripping out this outline tag. Wow. Yeah. The only good thing though is that it's going to be one ball now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one ball of yarn because it's all tied together already. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah, because you was that the one where you rushed? No, you were rushing joining the socks. Yeah, I'm rushing joining the socks. But yeah, so I, I just looked at it on the screen as we were recording. I was like, this thing looks huge. What's going on here? Oh, that's crazy. But going forward, though, what I think I'm going to do with my swatches is when I make a swatch, if there's any kind of unusual technique, mm -hmm. I'm also going to incorporate that into the swatch so that or maybe do a second swatch so that I can measure both plain yeah. and with whatever's going on and see exactly what's going to occur. Because I didn't know I'd be adding eight inches around because <laughs> that's what I did. I added eight inches because each of these ladders... It's about an inch long. Look at the line. That's wild. Look at how long the letters are. Yeah, that. <laughs> Who knew? Who oh, knew? No, indeed. See, and I... that's the yarn from one stitch. That I mm, knitting ain't for me, y'all. <laughs> mm -mm. That is not for me. That's, that's okay. okay. I'm going to rip that out and I'm going to start on the other one because it'll make my heart happy. <laughs> and then I will go back and make that one up because I really like it. And I did yeah, want to have two. It's a cute top. <laughs> but that, that's where I'm at, guys. This bad boy is going to have to I'm gonna have to be my mother's daughter and take it down to the ground. All the way back to a, a ball of yarn. Okay. All righty. This is like a first for her. She, she don't do that. If I can make it work, I will make it work. <laughs> but this thing ain't gonna work. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like well, why I'm is it so floppy? Sure, the second one will go much better now that you will be taking this effect into account. Yeah. And like I said, I'm gonna swatch with the drop stitch. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one to grow on. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> that's it for me. Yeah. I think that's it. You know, <laughs> we're both kind of like, oh lordy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for spending this hour with us. We will see you again next week. Think about what your transitional garment will be if you want to join us for this make along, because I'm cranking out that nymphal top. And I will have it to wear on the first day of fall. <laughs> anyway, guys, have a great week. Bye-bye.